Hello guys, welcome to the Wars and Weapons channel. I think I'm gonna change the name because during uh, like under the current circumstances, I think Wars and Weapons is an aggressive name because my country is going to war with Israel and I have to like uh, erase anything that may cause aggressiveness towards the channel. So I might change it to Tech and Tech, and I definitely will change it next week. But till next week, I have to decide if I want to change the name or I don't, or maybe. If I did, I have to do some things, such as a new logo, such as W and W under, like underneath here. Is it gonna have to be changed to show T and T or maybe T and T because like if I can replace the and with an N. But anyway, let's get on to the actual video. Now, uh, in my last few videos, I actually talked a lot about armored combat, tanks, how they were formed, how they evolved to the form we see today, and basically it was all about tanks and how they were going to evolve and now something that we all know about tanks is that they are pretty armory like they have a lot of armor so now in this video we're going to talk about the history of armor now what is the first thing you think you think of when you see armor it's of course the fact that it shields whatever it's like wearing it like if i'm wearing armor it's going to be shielding me so basically in this video we're also going to be talking about the history of shields as well as the history of armor because it was basically shields first and then it got evolved into the form that we see as armor. So let's get on to the actual video. Now the, the first humans actually had a big problem because during hunting runs they would sometimes meet animals that would sometimes kill a few of their family members. Now what is the best way to defend yourself? when you're going to fight off against something that is attacking you with something sharp or it's trying to bite you or something like that, like an animal. It's obviously something to put in front of it so that it can't attack you. Or something like if you have seen uh, some people they have, when they are going against a dog, they usually wear something thick on like their hand so once the dog is trying to bite they can take their hand in front of it and like once it bites the thickness of their clothing here won't allow the bite to penetrate and like uh, damage the person's arm so that's basically how what the first humans did because they just wanted something that could place in their front and like once any animal attacked it would fall on it or like they could resist their attacks with it so they basically started um, making these wooden things that were called shields because they would shield you from any attacks that an animal might attack you. So basically these shields were actually pretty successful because once animal would jump on humans, they could use it to stop them from biting them, stop it from uh, stop them from uh, like scratching them and any other attacks it could actually possibly have against humans. And due to this, their casualties started dropping massively. Now later on, Nations evolved and humanity evolved, they formed civilization, they went into war with each other and they thought that the shield was pretty effective against animals. Why don't we use it against humans as well? Because like it's a shield and like this sword you have is pretty similar to the teeth or the claws of an animal you are fighting. So once someone tries to like uh, hit you with a sword like this, he's just basically mimicking the scratching attack from uh, all animals so that's basically what they thought and they thought this shield could prove effective against swords or axes or maces or whatever the enemy has to throw at us and then later on iron bronze and other metals were discovered and the wooden shield became obsolete because there were more uh, like sturdy materials such as, as, such as as i said bronze and iron and they decided to make the shields out of those instead of out of like wood because if someone is trying to really trying to break your shield like with an axe it'll take no more than one hit for your shield to break but with an iron shield if sturdy and like thick enough it can withstand multiple hits from an axe before breaking or sometimes it doesn't even break so basically they thought that and they thought well we have metal why shouldn't we use metal shields like who picks a wooden shield over a metal shield of course no one or uh, unless you're trying to fight something extremely weak and you want to be as maneuverable as possible or something like that so basically they decided let's just use these uh, metal shields and they basically used it and then they found out that the fact that they have to fight with one hand and take the shield with the other hand is pretty annoying because well you can't fight with both of your hands and you can't uh, like deliver the damage that you could do with two hands, such as like 
uh, imagine trying to hit a sword with one hand and then not take the sword with two hands and then like you can do a lot more damage so they thought this and they thought well why don't we like make shields that's like hanging on us like something like a piece of clothing and that was how armors were born if you have actually paid close attention to armors such as chainmail or, or like other armors you can see that they are made of small plates that are put together into building what uh, we know as armor and these small plates are supposed to protect you against whatever your enemies might hit you with such as like a sword or against an axe or like against something that is going to penetrate you a lot it won't act as effectively but it will act effectively if you like your uh, target is trying to like hit you with a sword like this like once it hits it can't break those uh, like metal small metal things and it will just basically be useless against you and they thought this and they created the armor if you actually have paid close attention there are just multiple pieces of shield that are stuck together in different sizes and forms and then like they're put on someone as clothes like that's basically how knight armor is formed like it's just a breastplate that's just basically a pretty big shield and then like it's another pretty big shield right here and then it's another big shield on their stomach and then there's a big shield on their back and then so is it for their legs and their heads like the helmet is just like two shields right here one shield on the back of the head one shield on the top and like one face guard that you can put down like some helmets have some helmets don't have it's kind of like customizable because some people would put it some people won't put it because they think they block vision like that was basically pretty customizable but you had it so basically that was the concept of armor later on we evolved using other things in battle such as horses but uh, like horses weren't armored so even the slightest uh, penetration from a spear could easily make a horse crumble down to the ground so due to this, humans thought, why don't we just make armor for the equipment we use in battle? So due to this, like, knight armor for, like, horses were formed and, like, other types of armor. Later on, horses were replaced with machines, like, armored cars at the beginning because, like, they were better than the horses because they were faster. They had a machine gun on them because, like, imagine trying to shoot a machine gun behind the horse while controlling it. And now, like, imagine shooting a machine gun on a car and trying to control it. You can see that it's definitely a lot easier on a car. Due to this, and it's, like, named Armored Car. So, of course, it has tons of armor. And, like, it's just basically multiple shields stuck on other sides of it. So, like, two on the left and right side, one on the top in order to protect, like, your front. And then there is your machine gun, like, something like that. Then these armored cars evolved into tanks. And then it basically was just the same hump of metal, the same hump of armor. It was just bigger and stronger and you could say faster or not because uh, when armored cars were being used, they used pretty heavy armor and they had pretty slow engines. While modern tanks have less lighter armor and they have pretty stronger engines. So you, I think you could say they were slower than modern tanks. And during modern times, actually armored design got like evolved a lot that you have multiple types of armors which is like just as i said like you had a wooden shield and then an iron shield it's just the same thing during modern times where you have multiple types of armor explosive reactive armor uh, for example it's just basically like a type of armor that reacts with an explosion once something tries to penetrate like it's something where like something comes and then once it wants to penetrate it hits the arrow or explosive reactive armor and like the armor explodes with like explosive material put inside of it and then like once it's exploded it causes the shell to bounce like lose a bunch with kinetic energy and not have the penetration you would want like it, it, the aero armor is most present on russian tanks like if you take a look at russian tanks you think they're pretty big but I thought so until I saw a picture of one without explosive reactive armor. And then I thought this, like, this thing is pretty small. That's how much explosive reactive armor the Russians use. And the other type of armor is composite armor, which in my last video I said that it has, it's just basically a ton of layers that has different materials on it. And like it has uh, different protection levels or like different, pr protects against different things such as like, as I said, like a knight's armor would protect you against stabbing attacks 
It would also protect you against slashing attacks, but it would protect more against stabbing attacks. Like that's what we are going to assume here. But the earlier lighter armor would protect you only against slashes. Like it was basically something like that. Like you wear the uh, uh, like the knight armor, so that like even if something manages to penetrate, it will get stopped by what is in you're wearing inside. Like the smaller lighter armor you're wearing inside. So basically, this the concept of. Uh, the composite armor. Now, most uh, Russians, as I said, use explosive reactor, but they use it like on top of composite armor. And basically, that's the entire concept and evolution how armor was formed. Anyway, thank you for watching. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the war bell to be notified of the rest of the wars that will occur on the channel later. Thank you guys for watching again, and stand by for the next video.